Today is July 5th and I'm standing here on my new farm. And before I talk any, uh, go into any details about this property, I want to bring you up to speed on uh, this series that I'm going to be producing now. I'm going to call it, I think I'm just going to call it Bow Hunting Whitetails with Bill Winkie. So I'm going to keep it real simple, um, right to the point. And that's what it's going to be all about. Uh, during the off season, it's going to be theme based. I'm going to talk about uh, various strategies related to hunting. You know, really techniques, uh, philosophies, talk about deer, deer behavior, uh, a little bit about land management. And I'm going to use this property as a backdrop. Uh, I have permission to hunt other properties in this area. And there's a lot of really good public land around here too. So when the fall comes, I'm going to be spending my time hunting a variety of locations. And that brings me back to this farm. So we bought this last winter and uh, I didn't really know that much about this neighborhood at the time. Land has been so hard to find that I didn't have time to spend a lot of uh, research deciding whether or not this was a great neighborhood to be in. There's just so few options that I had to move fairly quickly. But it does have uh, two factors that I thought were really important. One is it's super pretty. I mean, this is a beautiful farm. It's in the river bluffs. It's in an area of the state where I wanted to be. It's close to my parents. Uh, this is an area where I grew up hunting. Uh, it's got a lot of, I say, sentimental or nostalgic value for me. Uh, but above that, it's just a really pretty area. Uh, the high bluffs, beautiful scenic overlooks. And then uh, the, the second thing that really jumped out at me when I looked at it back in December, I guess it was November uh, and early December, was the fact that there's no uh, very few invasive species on this property. So I can do a lot of uh, habitat work within the timber. I can open up the canopy. I can do a lot of stuff that I like to do without having to worry about this farm getting overrun with, uh, you know, in southern Iowa, it was bush honeysuckle. You know, there's other um, invasives that you can really uh, pick on in different regions. But, you know, the whole idea, of course, is to have a property that you can do the management on without having to worry about just the whole thing getting destroyed by the invasive species. So those are the two things that I had going for it. I don't really know yet whether it's a good neighborhood. You know, I know there's some deer here. Um, I have not run cameras yet. I'll get started in September running cameras here. But like I said, I'm gonna run in a number of other spots as well. I'm gonna hunt, you know, cast a wide net. I'm about five miles, four to five miles as the crow flies from where I hunted the last two seasons. So I've had really good success in this area. Um, been fortunate, I've gotten lucky, and I've killed some really nice deer. But, um, you know, that was on a different farm. So we'll see what happens here. Uh, let's touch a little bit more on this property, and then I'm going to drop off for today's episode. And like I said, I'm going to have one of these every week from now on. I'm going to bring you along during the off season. Uh, and then when I get into the season, I've got to figure out what my philosophy or my strategy is going to be there for keeping uh, regular updates because I want to make sure that I keep the viewers that are starting to support this um, up to date on the types of deer that I'm seeing, where I'm hunting, you know, what the activity patterns are, uh, strategies that are working and not working, that sort of thing. The same thing that we did at Midwest Whitetail, but I'm gonna, my goal is to do it without having a cameraman in the tree with me. So we'll see how that plays out. But anyway, so getting back to this farm, I've got two main priorities here now. Um, really, really I'd say one, number one priority, and that's to create habitat. You know, this farm has got a massive amount of, of timber on it already. There's a lot of timber. So it's gonna be pretty easy to do timber stand improvement, opening up the canopy, you know, letting the uh, understory grow lush and thick with lots of brows, um, lots of uh, bedding cover. You know, there's a, there's a lot of really good reasons for doing that. And I'll talk about it once I start getting into those projects. But the more challenging one is gonna be figuring out what to do with all this pasture. Uh, I'd say there's about 30 acres of pasture on this farm. And right now it's just grass. Most of it's just grass. And my fear is if I don't do anything with it, uh, a lot of it's just gonna turn into cedar trees. And uh, I just don't want a whole farm full of cedar trees. Um, so my solution is, there's, there's, there's uh, two ways to go on this. The areas that aren't too steep to run a tractor on, uh, my plan is to plant acorns like I did on the Southern Iowa farm. Go in there, spray the, the grass, kill it, till it up, you know, with the tractor and a disc or some kind of a tiller, spread the acorns, and then uh, incorporate the acorns back into the ground. Again, probably lightly disking those. And then you, 
you know, I'll get into that too. I mean, that's just, I don't want to go too deep into the specifics of, of what my plan is. But the whole idea here is to create permanent habitat in these pasture areas. Um, and then the areas that are too steep to run the tractor on, again, I don't just want those to turn into cedar trees. So in those areas, I'm going to have to get some help from people who understand um, like native, um, like prairie restoration and that sort of thing. Right now it's all cool season grasses, so I'm afraid if I burn it, all I'm going to get is going to be thistles coming back in. Uh, so I've got to have a good plan there, and I don't have that plan yet because I'm no expert when it comes to restoring prairie. But I do think on the steeper ground, it'd be really cool to have that diversity of the native prairie. Because you'd get some regeneration of trees, but you'd also get a lot of other species of plants that you know, deer and other wildlife need to thrive. Um, so that's, that's my, my focus here. I did plant um, two food plots, and one of them is doing pretty well. It's down in the valley, and I think that maybe the soil is just a little bit better there. I haven't decided yet, but that one seems to be growing really well. And then the one up on the ridge, the deer are just pounding that. And either the soil is so poor that the deer can stay on top of it where it doesn't grow fast enough to get ahead of the deer, uh, or there's just so many deer that found that that you know they're just eating it down. So that one, before the summer is over, I'm sure I'm gonna have to rescue that. You know, in the past, what I've always done with, with uh, uh, soybean plots that didn't work was uh, plant brassicas into them. You know, Big and Beastie blend has always been one of my favorites there. So before the summer is over, I'm sure I have to get into that soybean plot up on the ridge. Uh, but my hope is this, the one down in the valley uh, will do pretty well, and then I'm going to have some soybeans. But my big priority wasn't the food. Uh, I don't want to have a ton of food on this farm and bring a lot of deer into it because I want to be able to do the habitat work. And I don't want the deer um, just waiting to eat all the stuff that I'm trying to grow. So if you plant an oak tree and the tree pops out of the ground and every year it puts out, say, a, a 12 inch long, um, you know, I, I don't even know what that's called, like the regrowth, the fresh you know, growth for that season, then the deer eat that down, well, you're never gonna have a tree there. So if you have so many deer that you can't get your trees to grow, um, then you got a problem when it comes to creating habitat. So that's why I don't want tons of deer here right away. But I do wanna have at least some opportunities for hunting, if not for me, at least for my family, for some late season hunting with guns, uh, whatever the case may be. So I've got two food plots, and uh, like I said, later on in this series, I'll bring you up to speed on how those are doing, what I have to do to the one on the ridge to rescue it, and then uh, going into the season, I'll talk some strategy with you. But come back again next week. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna plan to post one of these every week, and they're not gonna be focused on this farm, usually. They're gonna be focused on deer hunting strategies, um, white-tailed deer behavior, how to hunt them. Uh, and then little by little, you know, as this farm starts to evolve, I'll talk more and more about how to grow them and then a little bit about how I'm actually hunting this place. But I'm going to keep the focus off this farm and cast a wide net, have a lot of fun hunting fresh ground. Uh, the challenges of, of hunting deer in uh, locations that I haven't hunted before, you know, how to find them, how to figure out where to put a tree stand, uh, stuff like that. So I'll bring you along for as much of that as I can and I uh, appreciate you joining me this week. I'll see you back here again next week for the next episode of Bowhunting Whitetails. And remember to always dream big.